I read Epictetus's handbook, or Enchiridion, and enjoyed it. The Stoics, Cynics, and Epicureans seem to be the philosophers who really dealt with human experience and happiness the most. The Existentialists were the first to pick up that mantle after the Stoics, but I think they were less successful at providing down-to-earth methods of finding happiness. In one of his videos on Epictetus or Stoicism, I'm not sure which, Professor Anton mentioned that Epictetus was considered part of the ethical school of Stoicism or something like that, and from what I've read, I'm not sure I would consider him a philosopher who is very interested in ethics. Um, and I'm sure that's, you know, kind of an ap academic um, categorization, so I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, lambasting Anton's um, uh, description of, of him being part of the eth ethical school. Um, Epictetus' handbook read like a handbook on how to be happy. Epictetus believes that we must align our desires and mostly aversions in, with nature in order to be happy. When we desire what is impossible, like immortality, we suffer unnecessarily. We are suffering not because death is something inherently bad, but because we consider it bad. Socrates did not fear death, so death must not necessarily be a bad thing. Only our judgment that it is bad causes us suffering. He says we should eliminate desire because when we desire things which are out of our control, we will almost inevitably suffer. And we when we desire things which are in our control, we might be desiring things which we cannot yet achieve, like a perfect happiness, for example. We should feel only feel aversion to the things which are in our control. Later in the Enchiridion, he sets out some guidelines which would be considered pretty radical and austere to some. Be for the most part silent, he says. Um, Epictetus prefers abstinence before marriage. He professes a kind of turn the cheek, turn the other cheek mentality when he says, "If someone tells you that so and so is speaking ill of you, do not defend yourself against what has been said, but answer, he did not know my other faults, or he would not have mentioned only these." But he also warns against bragging about these austerities or using your own austerity as an excuse to condemn others when he says. But do not therefore become aggravating or censorious to those who do indulge, do indulge, nor frequently boast that you yourself do not. I think that this is a good thing to remember when we discuss the Stoics or those like them, because we love to show how lacking our society is when we consider when we measure it by Epictetus's standards, or the Buddhist standards, for example. But when we do so, we are we also are not living up to their standards. I have the impression that Epictetus did not see his, te his teachings as categorical oughts, but hypothetical oughts. Not, you ought not to do this, or ought not to do that, but if you want happiness, freedom, and truth, you ought to think in this way. Epictetus was no prophet on the mountaintop. He was a slave, poor in riches, but not in wisdom, with a teaching which promised happiness if you wish to follow it. And I'm, I'm not sure what the labels are. I think it's just discourses or, um, but there's little, the, the paragraphs in the Enchiridion are labeled by numbers. And so I'm not sure um, if they're just called discourses, but in, in 41, the 41st paragraph, Epictetus says, I just like this, I just like this little short paragraph he wrote. It is the mark of a want of natural talent to spend much time on things related to the body, as in exercising a great deal, in eating and drinking a great deal. This should be done in passing, and you should turn all your attention to the care of your mind. And I just kind of thought about that, because our, our, <laughs> I'm being a bit of a hypocrite now, but I, said, I was thinking, our society kind of does, um, we, we observe, Obsess over the body, but not often over the mind. It's it's all about keeping a healthy body, but never a healthy mind. And um, maybe the thing that really would make us happy is to uh, to make a healthy mind rather than a healthy body. Although I've heard exercise can you know boost your spirits, but um, and being healthy is not a bad thing. Bodily healthy is not a bad thing, but maybe maybe we'd be happier if we focused a little bit on on mental health and um, and made that as important as, as bodily health. Um, and in 46 and 47, I just like this part of the book. Um, he says, never call yourself a philosopher, nor, t nor talk a great deal amongst laymen about philosophical principles, but do what follows from those principles. 
Thus, at a banquet, do not say how people ought to eat, but eat as one ought. For remember how Socrates had so completely set aside all ostentation that when, when people came to him wanting to be introduced by him to philosophers, he took them along and inter introduced them so well he he did did he bear so well did he bear being overlooked. Uh, if if that was um, a little opaque, <laughs> being read uh, the point his point being that philosoph or Socrates people would come to Socrates and say, oh would you introduce me to um, I don't know Pythagoras, and he he would he would go along and introduce introduce him to Pythagoras and introduce him ever these people to all these philosophers without ever saying, well, I'm a philosopher, I'm, I, <laughs> why don't you want to be introduced to me? Why aren't you, uh, you know, amazed that you're meeting a philosopher? He was never so ostentatious as to think that he deserved to be um, considered a philosopher, considered when, when, um, when you're trying to find philosophers. So I'll keep going from this um, paragraph. So that if talk should arise among amongst laymen on some philosophical principle, remain for the most part silent. For there is a considerable da danger that you will immediately vomit up what, what you have not yet digested. And I like that, fra that, that phrase or that sentence because um, I've often felt my own um, philosophical ramblings uh, and thoughts are a little half-cooked or a little half-digested and... <laughs> It's a it's an interesting image to think of it being vomited up all these all these half half baked ideas that people get in their minds um, without you know before without proper consideration of, of the um, those concepts. And, and I'll keep going. And when someone tells you that you that you know nothing and you are not nettled by it, then you may be sure that you are setting to work at your task. For sheep do not bring their fodder or their food their fodder to the shepherds to show how much they have eaten, but digest their food internally and produce well, wool and milk externally. And so you likewise should not display your principles to laymen, but rather show them the actions that will result from these principles once they have been digested. And that, I thought that was a really good image um, and a good way of thinking about it, because a lot of times we'll, we'll go around and we'll, we'll um, show people how moral we are and brag about our morality and and meanwhile we're 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 being jerks to half the people we meet and treating everyone horribly and um and so i like the idea of not proclaiming your ethical principles but digesting them and making them a part of the way you live and in that way showing your showing those principles to the people around you much like a sheep rather than showing its food to its owner digest the food and um and uh and gives the owner the wool and milk that it produces so i thought that was a a once again i thought that was a good image um and then in 47 he says um when you have become adapted to the simple life in bodily matters, do not pride yourself upon it, nor, if you drink only water, be saying on every occasion, I drink only water. And if, it, if at any time you want to train yourself to endure hardship, do it for your own sake and not for the world. Do not, do not embrace statues, but when you are violently thirsty, take a little cold water in your mouth and then spit it out and t tell no nobody. Now, he doesn't explain... Or uh, he doesn't um, make explicit what he meant by statues, but I, I, it's pretty obvious he means don't make don't make an idol or a statue out of yourself by um, thinking of yourself as being so um, moral or being kind of ascetic and drinking only water. Um, so. I'm running up to the end of this video, but uh, I guess I'll, so. I'll cut. I guess I'll cut it off there. But I'm I'm definitely glad glad I read this handbook, and I would um, recommend it to anyone because it's it's not hard reading really, and um, it offers some lessons that I've I've heard other uh, elsewhere, but they're still worth hearing. And he puts them in ways that are new and interesting. So. Um, I'm, this might not be my last video about Epictetus, so I just thought I would make a pr preliminary video or 
preliminary, uh, my, show my preliminary thoughts about this, about what I read.